Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to give you guys a couple options when considering what email client to use uh, on Windows 10. So on the right over here we have Thunderbird, which has been my email client of choice for quite some time now. And then over here on the left we have the Windows 10 official mail application, uh, which is built into Windows 10 out of the box and uh, obviously is what they're going to encourage you to use. So we'll talk about some of the advantages of Windows 10 Mail, followed by the disadvantages, and then we'll move on to Thunderbird, talk about the advantages and disadvantages, and you can make a decision uh, for yourself. Uh, obviously, these are two options that I like both of. Um, there's going to be other options out there, of course. If you want to, you just use um, the web browser and like log into Gmail manually or Outlook manually. That's fine, too. So uh, over here for Windows 10 Mail, uh, one thing I definitely notice is that it's got a much more modern and much slicker interface. Um, of course, this is going to be very similar to what you would expect from Windows 10 in general, having the same kind of layout as uh, most of the other uh, Windows 10 applications that are out of the box. Um, but because it's a modern app and has been developed for the uh, modern operating systems, you have uh, sleeker animations, you have a clean UI that's not cluttered at all, um, and when you do things like go ahead and create new mail messages, uh, let's just type a bit. I don't know if you can tell precisely, but uh, the feel is a lot better when you're typing in messages. It's got like a little bit of an animation going to the text, and that feels actually pretty good, to be honest. Um, in addition to that, uh, the editor for writing your emails, I would say, is probably on the better side. Uh, you can see on the insert tab over here that we have easy options like the ability to add files, uh, pictures, um, and uh, URL links as well. URL links probably being the most crucial of them. And it's not that you can't include those things inside of Thunderbird but that it is made way easier to do that inside of uh, Windows 10 Mail. Now, one thing I really like visually about the Windows 10 Mail application is that whenever you have an email chain going on, it'll show you a visual hierarchy of the different mail messages that have occurred in that chain, and you can click between them to navigate to the, uh, the one that you wanted to recall, or gather more information from, or just click the one at the top um, to basically see the most recent message. Now, obviously, this kind of functionality exists in one form or another in most email applications. In Thunderbird, uh, there'll be a little visual indication that there was uh, extra replies in the chain. Um, and then if you open up a mail message, which is a reply, you can see the previous message, um, for instance, the one that I was replying to. Also, if you really like the Windows 10 UI, the Windows 10 Mail application uh, will actually send notifications to your Action Center in Windows 10. That's the little thing in the bottom right hand corner where it'll give you notifications. So for instance, Cortana is asking me to set her up right here. Um, but other things like when your computer needs to reboot for an update, those kind of things pop up here, but you can have mail messages show up there too. And one thing I often find crucial for a mail application is the ability to basically have linked inboxes where you have four or five email accounts, but you view all the mail messages as one. In uh, Windows 10 Mail, we click on accounts, go to link inboxes, and then for all the mail accounts you have inside of the app, uh, you can create one linked inbox. Now, obviously, I can't do that here right now because I haven't added a second account. Um, but as soon as you add two or more accounts, it's very simple to do that and a useful feature. Now, to be fair, that functionality also exists within Thunderbird. If you were in Thunderbird and you have multiple email accounts, I believe the process is you go to over here for the hamburger drop-down menu, view, and then there'd be folders, and you would choose the unified view, um, where you can view all your inboxes over here as an all-in-one inclusion. Now to talk about a couple downsides to the Windows 10 mail application, I did notice when I was initially loading up my emails into the account that it was very slow in order to open up an email and see what's inside of it. Not exactly sure what was going on there. Maybe the app was slowing down because it was downloading a large amount of mail messages at once. 
Um, but you may experience some slowdown when you first launch the app and add in your different email accounts. Also, from what I've been able to see, uh, because the mail application is a little bit simplified, it doesn't have extra tools like having an RSS reader uh, built into it. So you may need to use other Windows applications or applications from the Windows 10 App Store in order to make up for that. It's not really a huge deal if all you were trying to do was check mail then uh, you'll be just fine with the mail application. And you can see in the bottom left-hand corner that uh, you can switch to the Windows 10 calendar application very easily with this. I'm assuming you are using Windows 10 calendar and not something else like um, one calendar. And then for managing contacts, you have easy access to the People app. Um, now on my main user account, it was able to basically synchronize with all my Gmail contacts very easily. And I found that to be good to have. Uh, it's a real pain in the butt if you have to do something like manually add in a CSV file of all your contacts or something like that. But uh, the People app is pretty good about that. So the integration with other apps do make up for the fact that it's a pretty simplified mail application. It's just kind of that all the functions that you would expect are spread out across multiple Windows apps. That said, and I could definitely be wrong on this, but I haven't seen a RSS reader that's built into Windows 10. Okay, so now I wanted to go ahead and move on to some of the positives of Thunderbird. Um, so if you like importing and exporting your settings off your email accounts so that you can use it on a new machine, uh, there's a tool for Thunderbird called Map, uh, Moz Backup, M-O-Z Backup, setting for Mozilla, of course, which is a third-party tool not maintained by the Mozilla uh, Foundation or Corporation, whatever they are. Um, but it allows you to export all of your email accounts and import them to a new machine. It's a very useful tool, and I use that a lot. Uh, unfortunately, I think that that only works for Windows machines, but you might be able to get it to run in Wine on Linux. Uh, now, my guess is on Windows 10 mail that if you have Gmail accounts and the like that you would need to re-add them in if you switch to a new copy of Windows. Not totally sure about that, um, but if it doesn't sync automatically like you can sync with Moz Backup, uh, you might need to add in a few emails manually there. One of the things that really sets Thunderbird apart from the Windows 10 mail application is that Thunderbird is more of a multi-purpose application. You can see here under the accounts section that it has create a new account for email, chat, and also feeds. So you can use Thunderbird as a feed reader, uh, just adding in a section which will pop over here and then adding in the RSS feeds you want to read uh, or listen to in the case of like a podcast feed. And you can also integrate uh, a few different chat accounts into Thunderbird, which is interesting but unfortunately, Skype isn't located here, and uh, I'm a big fan of Skype. So the fact that only Google Talk and Twitter there is a little bit of a downside. Well, IRC as well, and XMPP, whatever that is. Uh, but it does exist, and maybe you do use a couple of these. I, I think a lot of people are going to be using Twitter, but you may or may not want that integrated with your mail account. It's there if you want it. But really, ultimately, the biggest advantage that Thunderbird has going for it is that it is a cross-platform application. So if you want to have Thunderbird on Windows and you want to have Thunderbird on Linux, you can do that. Mac as well. Um, and I, I think that's nice in being able to have consistency between your different operating systems. Obviously, Microsoft Corporation, being the developer of Windows, is going to care mostly about Windows and keeping you on Windows. So they make great tools for Windows, but it stops there. Uh, you won't really see many of the Windows apps migrated over to Linux, like Microsoft Word, you're not going to have on Linux, although it is on Mac. So two of the major disadvantages to Thunderbird is that it has an older, clunkier interface. I don't know exactly how long they've had this look for, but it's been quite a few years in general. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on, and if you go especially into like the settings menus, um, it can get a little bit hectic. So for a new user, uh, it may be a little bit overwhelming. If you just ignore all the other settings, which you can probably do in general, um, you'll be just fine there. If you ever want to add a new account, it's kind of weird. The way I like to do it is to right click over here on local folders, go to settings, and then you get this account settings dialog where you can add in a new account. Um, alternatively, you could just click create a new account here. 
I, I think they streamline it a little better on the Windows 10 uh, application. But yeah, in, in general, it's a little bit trickier of an interface to learn. It's got a few more features going for it. Which, you know, in, in a way is maybe a positive. Uh, Windows 10 Mail doesn't have all that many appli uh, all that many settings, rather. So you have a bunch of stuff here, but if you open any of them up, um, the settings are quite simplistic, I would say, which is good and bad. It makes it easier for average users to use, but it may not have quite the same level of detail or customization that you might want. And then if we go over to the address book or the contacts, of Thunderbird, you can see that the contacts from my Gmail accounts do not automatically sync, uh, which is kind of a bit of a downside. So I did do a little bit of Google searching on this, and there are uh, applications or basically add-ons that can help you sync with your Google contacts, like this one, G Contact Sync. I'll try to put that in the description down below. Um, but yeah, you have to grab third-party uh, third-party tools to sync your contacts. It's not really automatic, like you just add in the mail account and then it brings in all the contacts with it, which can be a bit of a pain. Uh, me personally, I don't usually use the address book that much anyway, so it's not that big of a deal for me. But for people who rely on contacts a lot um, and don't want to have to do something like go to Gmail manually or whichever email service you're using, um, could be a little bit of a downside there. So that's going to be about it for my comparison between the Windows 10 official mail application and Thunderbird. So once again, these are both very solid tools for being able to manage your mail accounts on Windows without needing a web browser or anything like that. Um, and hopefully I've given you guys enough information to decide which one is going to be right for you. If you have any doubts, I would say go ahead, try them both. There's no reason not to. But in any case, I've been Chris. Thanks for watching this video on Windows 10 Mail and Thunderbird, and I will see you guys in my future video content.